are two questions that people are asking themselves these days. Number one, who is modern day John Galt? And secondly, how do I get first round impacts at distance? Well, we can do a lot of guessing and I've done a bunch of that. I've taken guns like this, a 14.5, where there's some information in the reticle or even an EOTech with a magnifier and you start slinging rounds hoping that you're gonna get some hits. The reality is though that without DOPE, DOPE is just an acronym that stands for Data on Previous Engagement, without DOPE and some information on where you need to hold, it's gonna be very difficult to get first round impacts and consistent impacts at distance. Now, before we get into some of the details here, we have to thank our sponsors, Shooting Surplus and Wideners. Guys, if you're looking for some of the items that you've seen in this video here, whether it's range finders, optics, uh, any of the other tools that they don't want you to have, go check out Shooting Surplus and then Wideners for the ammo. So moving on, when we first start building dope, we have to make sure that we have a true zero. I'm not talking about, man, that's my best guess and I think I have some rounds impacting about where my reticle is at an unknown distance. No, no, no. I'm talking about getting a range finder or maybe going to a range that has precise measured distances, whether it's 100 yards, 100 meters, it's good to know the difference between the two because your measurements will have a shift in where those rounds will impact based on yards or meters. So again, we have to be precise here. Then we're not just talking about, well, one out of my five rounds impacted where I was hoping for. No, 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 no. Where did it actually land that group average? And you may need to take one or two days to get a really stellar zero. Beyond that, if you are not getting a good zero, back up, slow down, your optic may be off, your suppressor may have some issues. There's a whole ton of things that we'll get into that explain what could be causing a poor zero. I know you guys are aware all of this stuff is very expensive, but one of the most important things that you can be doing is practicing with your EDC pistol. Now, the other thing that we can't do when we're dry firing with our EDC pistol is tracking our accuracy or where our rounds would actually be going when we're pulling the trigger iTarget Pro offers a solution to that. You can purchase a, a caliber specific laser that goes into your chamber that keeps uh, rounds from actually going into your gun and it gives you a laser that goes onto one of their targets and it will give you a lot more data than just dry firing on your own and thus giving you more information as if you were actually on the range. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to itargetpro.com and when you check out, use the discount code Dirty, their stuff's already not very expensive, but you'll save 10%. Again, go to itargetpro.com, use the discount code DIRTY, and then you're gonna put one of those laser bullets into your gun, and when you dry fire, you're gonna see a little laser actually come out of your barrel and impact, hopefully, where your, your sights are aligned. itargetpro.com, use the discount code DIRTY. So we're gonna start with the true zero. Then, as we build out dope, the end state goal, especially for this video, is to know at a given distance, I need to hold at X point on my reticle. So the idea with this is not EOTEX, it's not iron sights, it's not red dots. We're talking about something that has data on the inside of our optic, some grid system, whether it's MIL or BDC or MOA, and maybe even a top turret that will give me fine adjustments. So with that true zero, I'm then going to open up an app. There are so many ballistic apps on our phone that we can download for free. Uh, Applied Ballistics, Federal, and Hornady have some really good ones. I have the most experience with Hornady. It is free. There are some in-app purchases that you can get, but I'm going to screen record here and show you guys what I'm actually doing with this QFIX 6.5 Creedmoor and my Loophold Mark V to build out stellar dope and then I can start learning about um, wind, barometric pressure, elevation, and all the other things that could actually cause my round to impact somewhere differently. I'm mostly curious about my elevation hold at distance. So let's start by opening up this Hornady app. Now on the right hand side, there's, I know there's a lot here. On the right hand side, there's a BC, which is ballistic calculator. And this is gonna give us a cheat code once we have a really good zero. Once we input the information on our rifle and our ammo type, it's gonna give us more data than we have to find on our own, and that's fantastic. So, I have some favorites saved in here, but I'm gonna create a new one for you guys with this ammo load for my 6.5 Creedmoor. So let me hit the plus in the upper right hand side. Obviously, you can add an image if you want to. I'll call this my 6.5 Creedmoor, and the rifle is the Q, oops, Fix. The optic is a Mark V, 
HD. Now again, for some of you guys, you may be shooting 14 fives with different LPVOs. You can absolutely input some of that information into whatever gun it is that you're building out. This is just what I'm doing. Now it's gonna be asking about a bullet type. And when you download the free Hornady app, they only give you the, uh, the ammo type in Hornady. And I am shooting Federal today, and I'm looking to build out a dope card for this kind of ammo. So I'm shooting 140 grain out of this gun with this ammo, and so I'm going to go to ammo on the far right, and then filter at the top. I'm gonna to select rifle. And then as I scroll down, I'm looking for the ammo type that I'm shooting. For you, again, it may be 556. For me, it's this 6.5 Creedmoor. And then I am shooting a, what am I shooting here? 140 grain projectile. So I'm gonna find the best that I can uh, that matches in Hornady. There we go, so I have a 140 grain Amax. I'll start with that and it's gonna at least give me some good information to go out and start to validate my holds at distance. So good, I have the ammo. And the next question is load information. I don't have uh, custom loads. They can offer case primers, overall weight and length. I'm not getting into that at the moment, so let me back out and input some rifle info, that next line down. Muzzle velocity. Well, man, how do I know muzzle velocity? If you have a chronograph, that's a phenomenal tool, and it will help you with your holds at distance. Think about it this way. Bear with me. Okay, muzzle velocity. Let me uh, draw you a quick demo here. So let's say that I have an intended target out here at whatever distance, it really doesn't matter. And I am shooting, here's my optic up here and the gun goes off and my bullet is making a flight path like this in order to make an impact. Here's what I really am curious about. How fast and how little time does my round have to get to that target and here's why. If I stand here and I drop my round it is going to fall because of gravity, obviously. Now, if I am driving in my car and I hang my hand out of the window and I drop that round, granted the round is moving with me, but gravity is still going to work on it at the same rate. So, how quickly does this round have, how much time does it have to get to my intended target in order to reduce the amount of time that gravity has to work on it? The 6.5 Creedmoor round is getting there quite a bit quicker than a 147 grain nine mil. And thus this nine mil round would have to be angled fairly high in order to hit that target simply because the nine mil is giving gravity more time to land on my target. So that's why muzzle velocity plays a huge role and where we actually have to hold our optic in order to get rounds to impact at distance. So let's go back to our phone real quick and we're gonna find the muzzle velocity. Well, if I don't have that chronograph, how am I gonna find muzzle velocity? Number one, you can check the back of your box. If the box doesn't say, you can absolutely Google it. So this Federal is saying that at uh, 2725 is where that round is exiting a barrel. Now that may actually change depending on your gun, but that's a good guess. So I'm gonna start at 2725. Okay, now the next thing on our ballistic calculator is our zero range. Again, you want this to be super precise. And I zeroed my rifle at 100 meters, not 100 yards. And there is a difference. And so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna scroll down to output distance. And I'm gonna change this from US standard down to metric. It takes me back and I'm gonna go back into set rifle info. And look, now I have 100 meters. So we resolved that. Sight height. Now the angle at which your sight is actually mounted does play an impact. Just trust me, it does. And our ballistic calculator is gonna once again cheat and give us that information. But we do need to input the correct info. So if you have calipers, you can measure that correctly for yourself. If you don't have calipers, check your optic mount. So when I, uh, when I wasn't sure, I hopped online and I looked for my LaRue, found the correct, I found my receipt, went back to my order number and I found that this sits at 1.5 and I input that into my ballistic calculator. So look, it is already at 1.5. And then obviously the next thing on the list that it's asking for is barrel twist. You should be able to look at your barrel and it should be noted one in seven, one in eight, one in 10, whatever it is that you're shooting. I wasn't sure because it wasn't stated on the rifle and so I hopped online and I figured out that this 6.5 Creedmoor is shooting a one in seven. So I'm just going to note seven. Impact windage. 
if you know that you are shooting a certain gun with a different load type and you are getting left to right deviation, this is getting a little bit in the weeds here, but you can intentionally shift your round to impact left or right. I don't want any of that. I want it to be true on that vertical line. So my left and right windage is going to be zero. So perfect, we input all of the information here on the rifle. I'm gonna back out and I'm going to, at the very end, down at the very bottom, where it says units slash result, I looked at the top of my optic and it says MRAD or mil radian. It's a different form of measurement at distance than MOA. If you're not sure the difference between MILRAD or MOA, you can hop online. If you're looking for what it is that your optic is, it should state either under that top turret or on the box that you purchased it with. So we're gonna go to MRAD and my whole information is input here. Now I'm gonna hit save and from there I have a new rifle. Now once you select that new rifle like I just did, you're looking at a whole ton of new information. And this is where you can start to select on that left-hand side as I spin that wheel out to 250 meters. It's giving me, on the left-hand side on the bottom, come up 1.01 MRADs. Now, after we have our 100 meter zero, we input some good information. We're not sure about our muzzle velocity. The next thing to do is to take that gun out to a little bit more distance and we are looking for any wild deviation. Am I getting crazy deviation to the left, to the right? Am I getting uh, vertical elevation change? And as long as you're actually staying relatively true, we validated that the information that we put in here and on our gun is still correct. Now, of course, if I take this to 200 meters and it tells me to come up down on that bottom hand side, 0.6 MRADs, I can take my top turret and make an adjustment to 0.6. The reality is though, we're not necessarily looking for a height elevation change. At 200 yards right now, we are just looking for no major change. I don't wanna be completely missing the target out at 200 yards, I should still be on target. But as mentioned before, we have one big unknown, which is muzzle velocity. So from here, we're going to go out to distance. Hey, did you guys know that more American dollars were printed in the last two years than had ever been printed in the history of time? Yeah, there's gonna be a crash of some kind coming up. I think we all know that. But we have to be careful about our personal investments. Think about your retirement, think about your kids, think about stability and specifically financial stability. So one thing that you guys can do is go over to Allegiance Gold and start to invest in hard goods, gold. A lot of this bad stuff started to happen when we actually got away from the gold standard. Now, our friends over at Allegiance Gold have a five-star trust with TrustLink, a AAA rating with a better commerce allegiance, an A-plus rating with a better business bureau, and you guys can get up to $5,000 on a qualifying purchase when you go to protectwithdc.com. Again, that's protectwithdc.com. Or you can go and call and actually talk to someone on the other end. You're gonna to wanna to call 844-790-9191. Again, you can go to protectwithdc.com or call 844-790-9191 and start investing into some gold today. All right, so we have some good data. Our ballistic calculator is at least telling us how high we need to hold at some distance. But the one variable that we were not sure about because we didn't have a chronograph was our muzzle velocity. And as we know, muzzle velocity will very much so dictate how quickly that round gets there, how much time gravity has to impact on it, and then how much elevation we actually need in our reticle. So I took this rifle out to 800 meters and I took my, my little spinny wheel on the left-hand side of my ballistic calculator and I took that up to 800 meters as well. And the calculator told me to hold at 7.09 mils. Now, that's technically 7.1 if I round up, but when I put some rounds on target, my rounds were impacting about 0.2 mils higher. And the way that I could tell that was holding my reticle on my intended point of aim, but I could see in my graph that they were deviating high 0.2 mils. And the reason for that is because my muzzle velocity was higher than the box stated it should be. It's a long barrel, I have a suppressor on there, it makes sense. So how do we resolve that? Because I want this to be precise at any distance. 
I'm gonna go up to Edit Rifle Info in the right hand corner, and as opposed to 7.1, I'm looking for uh, 6.9, right? So let me bump this up to 2740. Now this is a guess, and I'm gonna go back and hit save, and look, it comes up at seven mils even. So my muzzle velocity must be faster than 2740, so I'm gonna to go to 2745. And let's go back and save. And obviously, this is a little bit of a jerry-rig way to find your muzzle velocity, but it actually works. So look, here I am at 0.697. I can round that up to 0.69. In fact, my muzzle velocity may be even just a hair faster than what we input. But now I validated at distance. If I hold at a certain point, the round is going to impact there based on my ballistic calculator. And we've just proven that the information on the muzzle velocity with a known distance and with a known height in my reticle is true. It's a lot of work, but finally I can take my spinny wheel at home and I can validate on the range that all of this information is correct. And that's where we start to get a little bit of a dope card. So on my weatherproof notebook, I have some information for a 14.5, 55 grain projectile, zeroed at 100 meters. You can tell that at 350 meters, I need to hold two mils high, and my drop in centimeters is 64.5. I generally never actually use this information, the drop in centimeters, but I know that I have to hold 0.2 mils high. But this 5.56 rifle is very different than a 6.5 Creedmoor, and I have that information in a ballistic app. I just wanna be able to then put it in a piece of paper that doesn't take a battery, is weatherproof and doesn't have to go, uh, it can go to the range with me while I don't have to have an iPhone. So let's take this information and put it onto paper. All right, so typically I would put all this information small and fine onto here. Some people even put them onto stickers and then put them on their scope cap so they can see. I'm just gonna do this on a blown up version so that you guys can get a general idea of what information I'm gonna put on here and then you can refine it as you go. So my distance is 100 meters and my hold because I zeroed there is going to be zero and we'll be, uh, we'll be specific 0.0. I'll then spinny wheel up and I'm gonna go to 150 and let's see what my hold is. I need to come up 0.2 so at 150 meters I need to come up point two. And I'll even be specific over here on the hold. I'm gonna go hold slash mil, four mil radians. Then I'll take my spinny wheel and I'm gonna go to 200. And of course, if you want information at anything from 185, 195, you can get really specific. This is your dope card. You do what you want with it. So at 200 meters, I need to come up 0.6 mil radian. So at 200, I need to come up 0.6. And I'm gonna trace this all the way down to where I have data all the way out to as far as I think is applicable. So what if I wanna be able to shoot at 1200 yards? I don't wanna be able to, I don't wanna to have to have my phone with me. 1220, at 1200 yards, I need to come up 14.99, let's call it 14.1 and I can write that information down, and that's where my dope book applies to my gun for me. Now, there's more to the story. This is not a video on reticles and how to actually refine your reticle to your gun, but let's talk really quickly about what 0 .2, 0 .6, 0 .8, 14 point whatever means, and I'll demonstrate again on this rifle with my Leupold Mark V. So once again, you absolutely have to know what your optic is asking for and what the information provided is. This optic, the Leupold Mark V, the 3 to 18, gives you options to make elevation adjustments in 0.1 mil radian. So when my dope is asking me to come up 0.2, I need to come up two clicks. If it asks me to come up 1.2, I'm gonna go up a full 10, which takes me to one and two more clicks. That's 1.2. Now the beauty to it is a lot of reticles are gonna give you the same adjustments, not all of them, but a lot of reticles give you those same adjustments in your 
uh, optic itself. So these adjustments, my center dot is where I actually zero. And if I come down, let me get around here. I know that this first line is 0.2 and that's why you actually have to have an understanding of your optics. So I can make finer adjustments in that top turret than I can in my reticle here. So this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And that first big line is one mil radian. So if this is asking me to come up at 150 meters, 0.2, I am going to hold at the first small line without making any adjustments to that top turret. So why would you dial with your top turret or hold? What's the difference? Well, because you can be more precise and it's really nice for the human eyeball to focus your eye on the very center of your reticle. If you have time and maybe you're just shooting a deer and you're only gonna take one perfect shot, go ahead and dial. If you're gonna be shooting multiple targets at varying distances, it's gonna be a lot faster to keep your eye inside of that optic and not have to worry about taking it out and looking at your turret and then did I forget to dial to a different distance? So. It depends on what it is that you're actually doing, whether you're going to dial or hold. And once again, different optics are gonna give you the freedom to do different things. Some optics have capped turrets to where it's a lot of work to make an adjustment. So you need to figure out what tools it is that you're working with and then refine it to the dope book that you have established. Now, there's one more point that needs to be made. We've only talked about holding at distance based on uh, our optic at an unknown distance, or maybe you have a rangefinder and you do have a known distance. But what happens when you have a change in barometric pressure, a change in ammo type, a change in wind, of course? All of those things are gonna make a fairly drastic impact at distance to where your rounds are going to land. So there's more to the story than just what we're talking about here, but at least you guys will have some good information to take out to the range and validate, yeah man, at 300, 500 yards, I know where I need to hold in order to get a first round impact. And as you guys are aware, we obviously did not answer the first question that was posed. Who is John, the modern day John Galt? Drew, who do you think? The, I don't know, maybe Eram. Uh... <laughs> he doesn't work on railways. I know, but he does work on the modern railway, which is space travel. Oh, so what if he good. were to just disappear, take his tech with him and start recruiting all the best minds in the world and pull them out of their current jobs and into this secret project he's worked. He remove their, their capabilities from the world and just let it all crumble while he's building something bigger. Okay, who's the pirate? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, who, who would modern. Ragnar, who, who would be the modern day Ragnar Danisku? He's the one who's like chaotic and he's actually out there trying to tear down the system. Yeah, it's smuggler. But, but for the better. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one reaching out to new people. I got it. Hey. <laughs> Alex Jones. <laughs> He's got the, I've got the dossier right here. Impact. Impact. Left. Yep. Impact. Well, for sending go. a 77 grain I know. out of a 14.5, um, that's pretty rad. Yep. Sweet. Makes it fun.